Hi, I'm Henry Crew. Thanks for coming back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking to you about Adventure Gear. Now, some of you may already know that in 2018 I started a 52 and a half thousand mile journey to become the youngest person to circumnavigate the world on a motorcycle. On that trip, I spent 381 days traveling through 35 countries in all kinds of weather and all climates. So I've had a lot of experience in this suit and hopefully I can give you some good information that allows you to make an informed decision um, when purchasing adventure gear. Now I'm gonna go through what worked, what didn't work and what I would do differently if I was doing the trip again today. It's important to note that I was fortunate enough to be given this suit by Revit before leaving for my trip but I received no payment from them and I haven't had a working relationship with them um, since, since they gave me their soup, so you can rest assured that my opinion on this is about as unbiased as it can be. So when I left for my trip around the world, I wasn't particularly thrilled about the idea of wearing an adventure suit. The whole concept was that I wanted to ride a cool looking bike wearing cool looking clothes and just prove that anyone on any bike wearing whatever they wanted can ride around the world. However, I quickly discovered that wearing my more casual motorcycle gear whenever the weather was good, it still got filthy. And as that was the only casual pair of jeans and more casual jacket that I had, uh, that meant I looked grubby walking into pubs and bars and meeting new people. And I ended up wearing the adventure suit pretty much all the time I was on the bike. I really recommend having a dedicated riding suit, whether that's an adventure suit or not, and not trying to double up on things because stuff gets filthy when you're on the bike, no matter whether the weather is good or not. And honestly, it's just more comfortable. Wearing jeans, I found that it irritated my skin and the seams and stuff became uncomfortable in long days in the saddle. So I'm a bit of an adventure suit convert. For me, the biggest advantage of an adventure suit is the versatility and practicality. It's specifically designed to keep you dry and it allows you to open up vents to allow more air in or adjust it to layer up underneath to keep you warm. They're also packed full of safety features and technology so you know that you're going to be protected when you're on your bike. I found out the hard way that seams and the weave of the fabric in protective motorcycle jeans um, are they're not comfortable for long days of riding when you're sweating in the jeans. Um, the Kevlar lining makes them really hot and they also take forever to dry out if they do get wet. And as I mentioned before, whatever you're wearing is going to get filthy so it might as well be a dedicated riding suit that you're not going to want to wear off the bike. Okay, so let's jump into it. Um, I'm gonna take you through what I brought along with me on the trip, what I liked, what I didn't like, and what I would take now. Revit supplied me with quite a lot of gear for the trip, much of which I didn't take with me as I was trying to pack light, but there were a few things that I double or tripled up on. Mainly gloves, I had a summer pair of gloves, I had a winter pair of gloves, and I had a heated pair of gloves for those really cold days. I also had a casual pair of motorcycle jeans and a casual riding shirt. Um, for city riding or really hot days, but I'm gonna keep it simple and stick to the essentials my everyday adventure riding suit for this video which is the Defender Pro Gore-Tex jacket, Defender Pro trousers and the Dominator gloves. So the Defender Pro Gore-Tex suit, it's not Revit's top of the line suit but it is up there. The jacket comes in at about 600 pounds and you're looking at around 450 pounds for the trousers. It's a lot of money, but in terms of adventure gear, you can certainly spend a lot more. So what are you getting for your money? Let's find out. The jacket and trouser are made from Revit's signature PWR knit fabric. Now this fabric is knitted in a certain way that makes it super strong and super abrasion resistant. It's very durable and that's exactly what you need for long distance um, journeys. The jacket and trouser both come with a removable Gore-Tex liner which is super waterproof. There's a good venting system, there's CE level 2 rated knee and hip armour in the trousers, there's CE level 2 rated elbow and shoulder and back protector in the jacket. There's a bunch of pockets which is great for storage, I'd say the jacket storage is better than the trousers. And there's also a lot of adjustment on both the trousers and the jacket, which is great for layering up or thinning down in hotter weather. The jacket's still gonna fit you well. Okay, let's start with some positives. This suit is all day, every day comfortable. Underneath the removable Gore-Tex lining, the jacket and the trousers are lined with mesh. This is super comfortable, it's super breathable, 
and it allows a lot of airflow without irritating your skin. There's no rubbing points, there's no pressure points. It's great. Long days in the saddle, you're not gonna have any skin irritation. The Gore-Tex lining really does work. It kept me bone dry throughout the whole of the trip without any issues. So I would really recommend going for Gore-Tex if you can. The protection levels of this jacket are great. You feel really safe while wearing it. And although you know the armor is there, it's not intrusive and it, it doesn't bother you on a day-to-day -day basis. I can really vouch for the impact protection having come off the bike off-road a few times while wearing this suit. Although I never crashed on the road, so abrasion resistance, you're just gonna have to take their word for it. Go, go, go. Oh, okay. oh, One, oh. two, three, go! Woo! Oh. The amount of pockets in the jacket is great and in the jacket they're a good size so you can fit a, a useful amount of stuff in them. I had a good system sorted out where I could carry the right amount of day-to-day -day stuff in the jacket at all times. The trousers not so much, I found them really hard to access and the openings were small but we'll get into that a bit later. As I mentioned before, this jacket has a great level of adjustment and so did the trousers. It's really useful when you're layering up as this jacket doesn't come with a thermal liner. Personally, I didn't mind about that. I had mid layers and base layers which I used to keep myself warm and it actually allowed um, more of a customizable heat level, which was great. But if you're spending this sort of money on a jacket, maybe that's something that you want included. I found that the ventilation on the jacket worked really well with the Gore-Tex liner removed. However, on the trousers, I found that the lower leg was often not very ventilated and it got a bit sweaty, especially riding an air-cooled Ducati, which kicks out a lot of heat from the engine right onto my legs. There were a few things that frustrated me about this jacket and some grew to annoy me more and more as the trip went on. The adjusters on the jacket and on the trousers tended to work themselves loose throughout the day. So I'd find myself hiking up the trousers or readjusting constantly. The arm and waist adjusters on the jacket also snagged on each other when getting on and off the bike or putting a backpack on, which is another kind of annoying trait. It feels a bit like the pocket in the trousers are a bit of an oversight. And unfortunately, none of the pockets on the jacket or the trousers, save for the one inside the Gore-Tex lining are waterproof. I found this out the hard way, storing documents that I didn't wanna leave on my bike, and unfortunately, they got soaked. Continuing with some of the flaws of the liner, it's a bit frustrating in flippant weather, which you're gonna discover in the tropics or in certain seasons in any country around the world. It's not particularly difficult to remove and it doesn't take a long time, maybe 10 minutes. But when you're gonna to have to do this 10 times a day, it does become super annoying. In tropical countries, the liner makes you choose between being too hot and being soaked with sweat or taking the liner out and knowing that you're gonna get soaking wet when it chucks it down at some point during the day. If you had a laminated suit, you'd be able to open the vents and get the benefits of that vented jacket without removing the liner. And as much as Gore-Tex claim otherwise, I just didn't find it was breathable and you're sweating and it's all sticky and slimy and horrible. Um, yeah, not great. The only thing is a laminate suit is gonna set you back a considerable amount of money, probably a good few hundred pounds more than a lined suit like the one that I took on my trip. So it's probably gonna come down to budget at the end of the day. But if you're riding in tropics, if you're riding in places which have flippant weather and you're gonna be hot one minute and soaking wet the next, it's probably worth that extra investment. One of the other negatives is the weight of the jacket. It's got a lot of armor in it and you really can't expect it to be that light but it is kind of heavy. Most adventure suits are. You aren't gonna notice this when you're riding unless you're doing some really extreme off-road or something energetic like that. But the point that I really noticed it was at the end of the day, taking all the luggage off my bike and having to lug my trousers and my jacket up a flight of stairs along with my bags or through a forest or wherever. It's just not ideal. One major flaw that I found which is really not a good trait, is that this jacket and trouser material can melt. Okay, I had two experiences of this where my leg touched the exhaust by accident and it melted straight through the trouser. I was lucky that the second time round it didn't melt through the Gore-Tex, so the trousers were still waterproof, but it's not what you want. There's a great big leather panel on the inside of the leg, but I think it should be bigger because if, if the rest of the fabric's gonna melt, then what is the point of having it there? 
It's really dangerous and I had some pretty serious burns on my legs from it as well. My last point is just something to be aware of. Make sure that you try this on and make sure that the trousers are long enough. I had the regular length trousers, they weren't long enough really. Um, you have to wear these trousers high for them to be comfortable on the bike and they're going to ride up a little bit as well throughout the day. Um, so just make sure that when you try the trousers on you're not wearing them on your waist, you are pulling them all the way up and that they fit nicely there. Okay, so these are the my most favorite thing that Revit supplied me for the trip. They're the Dominator Gore-Tex gloves and they are incredible. They have an insane amount of protection, a great knuckle protector. There's um, protectory bits in the fingers as well. You've got thumb slider and a palm slider. The adjustment is fantastic. It's super simple and they fit like a glove. Um, brilliant, super waterproof, super protective. They're quite insulated, so they work in colder weather, and they're also pretty breathable, so it's not unpleasant in hot weather. They kind of sit in the middle, which is why I took three gloves with me on the trip. Fantastic, buy them. They are quite expensive, but I mean, I would ride in them every day now if they didn't smell like someone's left them. I don't even want to be this close to them right now. Yeah, these are about £199, I think, so not the cheapest glove in the world, but I'm pretty sure that people like Bellstaff make leather gloves that have pretty much no protection and cost about the same, so worthwhile investment. So these are the second pair of boots I had on the trip. They're the Pioneer Outdry boots. I originally had the taller version. Um, they leaked ridiculously bad. They leaked a lot. Um, they weren't that comfortable. I hated them. Revit sent me out the shorter version as they didn't have a replacement longer version in stock. These leaked as well. So these are the least favorite things I took on the trip with me. They're not super comfortable, which I mean, combined with how non-waterproof they are, is really not great. They are really protective, but that is about it. I don't like the boa fastener up the top here. It's over-engineered, it's pointless. What's wrong with zips and laces? If it's not waterproof, I'm not really interested and that's why I would not be recommending these shoes. So I mentioned before that I used base layers and mid layers to keep me warm underneath this adventure suit. And I just wanna give a special mention to the Revit Climate Mid Layer. Um, fabulous bit of kit. It really does keep you warm or kind of keep you relatively cool. Great investment, um, buy one. So in summary, I am an adventure suit convert. I didn't think I was gonna be, but it just makes life so much simpler having a dedicated riding suit and the practicality and versatility of it became really valuable to me. Now there were a few flaws with this suit as we've discussed. I think the lining is probably the most frustrating one on the day-to-day -day basis. So if I was gonna do the trip again, I would spend the extra money and get the laminate suit. But that's only if you're gonna be doing a really long trip in those climates that I mentioned. I do think this is a really good adventure suit and it did me well for all that time I spent on the road around the world. The gloves, fantastic, love them, would buy them again and again and again. I've had two pairs of them now, um, they're fantastic. I mean, the only reason that I stopped wearing the first pair was because the smell became unbearable after so many days of riding in them. The boots, bin them, don't touch them. Revit makes some new enduro adventure boots, which I've heard are really, really, really good, but I just didn't get on with these ones. And finally, mid layers. That polar mid layer is great, although it's not part of the adventure suit. I just wanted to give a special mention to it and say that that was a really worthwhile piece of kit that helped me every day. Thanks so much for watching. Um, I really appreciate it. Make sure to like the video, subscribe, and I'll keep you up to date with more stuff like this. Let me know if there's anything you want me to cover or any questions you have in the comments below.